So here's the arch I'm gonna be trimming out today. We're gonna to be putting jam extensions in here and a curved one in the arch and then just wrapping the sides with uh, casing and then flex molding around the top, which is gonna be getting rid of this textured area by adding a uh, piece of stock right here. And it's gonna be three quarter inch MDF. And this is 10 and a quarter. So what I did is I got a one by 12 and I'm gonna be ripping that down to 10 and a quarter. So yeah, should come out nice. This is some crown that we did about a month ago when we were here. Hasn't fallen down, so that's a good thing. And then over here we did a nice little three-piece return where the ceiling started to vault. But with this arch, it's gonna be a simple classic look and I think it'll be a nice finishing touch. So we got that base popped off and getting this thing ready for install. Next thing I'm gonna do is check these miters where this arch meets the vertical jam extension that I'm going to be putting up and I'm going to be doing that using this Sterat miter saw protractor. I'm going to push it in like this and then get a reading. Since we're doing a miter cut we're going to look at this indicator right there and we're at 29 degrees so we're going to go with that I like to get a few readings if the jam is wide enough. I know that's kind of blurry for you, but I'm seeing the same 29. Now, just because this miter right here is going to be 29 degrees, don't think that one is. So we're going to check that one as well. More than likely it will be, but uh, don't trust it that they're the same. So I just checked the arch and it is less than eight foot. So I'm gonna take this one by 12, chop it down and then send it through the table saw, but I'm only gonna send this one side through. And this one will be just left over and off cut, or it could be a second chance if I blow it the first time, which is always good to have extra material because you don't wanna be running out of the job site. So I'll cut this, send it through, and then we'll get ready to measure the, um, the arch. Is this the safest setup? Probably not, but you do what you gotta do. Just make sure your shoes are tied when you approach the table saw on the floor, because you don't want to trip and then try to catch yourself on this blade. That would be a bad day. So I need a measure up inside this arch and get a measurement on that. Obviously, you can't take your tape measure and get an accurate reading that way. So the best thing to do is take some blue tape and just put it up in the arch. I like to put it on the bullnose closer to the edge that way I know that it's straight. If I put it like in the middle of this area here, it could kind of be wavy. So I just use the edge to my advantage. So what I'll do, I'll just pull enough of this to where I don't have to really hold the roll. We'll say about right there. And then I wanna put it past the um, angle there where the miter is gonna be, cause I'm gonna come back later and cut that with a blade, just a regular utility knife. And that'll give me exactly how long this arch is. And we encountered this one day and couldn't get our tape around it, obviously, the first time we ever did an arch. And like they say, necessity is the mother of invention. So you just gotta get creative and this works out really well.
This piece of tape represents the exact measurement that this inside board needs to be. So I'll take this off, go lay it and stick it to my workpiece. It has adhesion on it, obviously. And then I can cut it in position. It's real important though that when you carry this out that it doesn't, you know, tear or stick to something or fold over on itself. We want to keep this in pristine condition until we lay it on our workpiece. So with that, I'm going to go lay it on that workpiece, cut the miters, which we said were 29 degrees. And that's it. That's simple, simple way to measure an arch. The tape's not going to stretch. So it's a really accurate method. Haven't had any issues with it. So we got our piece of tape and again, we want to put it, we want to follow an edge because we want it to be straight. If I put it in the middle, it could tweak in left or right directions. But if I put it right on the edge and use the edge, we're going to get the most accurate measurement here. And this workpiece is face down right now. The good side will have the, um, the heel of the miter and the bad side right here, the unfinished side will have the toe. So with that, I can cut my miters on here, pull the tape off, and then do my kerf method. And to cut the miters on this big board, we're gonna remove the fence, dial into 29. Which is gonna be right there. Lock that down. And then we'll go right on the edge, pretty much where that board begins. That's where I started the tape. Again, this is another reason I have a big compound slider, 12 inch. Make sure we're looking good all the way. Looks pretty good. And we're going to line up that blade right with that tape right there. And I didn't actually cut the tape. I just cut right next to it. Now this tape is ready to be removed and we don't need it anymore. Now I can get in to the kerfing process. So every half inch, I'm going to cut half the depth of this board so we can get it to bend up in that eyebrow arch. Now MDF is already a little bit flexible and you've seen us bend it on this channel before with the kerf method. It's gonna bend a lot. If you've seen us do this method before, then you know how it's gonna look. But we'll go ahead and get the circular saw and make this thing happen. So here's our curved board right here, and it looks like it's got a lot of flexibility to it already. So hopefully I did it the right way where it'll bend for how much we need it to. But there's only one way to find out. It's gotta go in and give it a shot. So this arch is pretty small. Hopefully this thing really bends up in there. If it doesn't, I would have to get flex mold, which you'll see me use later but the reason i don't like to do a whole lot of flex molds in these areas is because when you shoot the flex mold it kind of pulls in pulls it in and you end up with all these indentations so with flex mold you got to be strategic with the um, adhesives but with this we'll check it out and more than likely i'm not going to be able to do this alone but at least i'll be able to see if it fits and hopefully I don't snap it <laughs> it's 
important to have those things pretty much a half inch all the way across because if it's too close to one another, you'll be in bad shape when you get to this point at least. Okay, that is definitely gonna be a two man job here. So what we'll do is we'll set this, I know it's gonna fit, we'll make sure of it real quick but I'm going to put some liquid nails on the back of this thing. Um, just for added peace of mind, you don't necessarily need it. Once it's bent in that position, it's not going anywhere, but I'll throw some on there and it'll help a little bit. No, it still needs to go up. That's good. So we got our arch in here. It's looking good. And you can see how that miter ends right there on the crease of that drywall joint. And then we have another 29 degree just cut off sample right here. And we'll just check this out real quick. So it's looking really good right there. So that'll go just like that. And you can see how nice and tight that is. Really that Starat Mitersol Protractor is just an absolutely amazing tool. So 29 degrees right there, it's looking good. What the heck? Dude, no way, it took a long lunch. John must have put that whole job in by himself. Oh crap. 7.30. Man, at least I didn't have to do it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, but hopefully you learned something from this video. It's a cool little carpenter trick where if you need to measure something that's a radius or curved, you can actually use just any kind of masking tape. That's gonna do it for this video. And like I said, necessity is the mother of invention. So until next time, we'll see you on the next one. Take care.